Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is the podcast for you. And welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown and you're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And today is just like every other day in real estate, which means it is wide open and different and full of things that you never, ever expected because, frankly, nobody really understands real estate except those of us in the middle of it. And speaking of those of us in the middle of it, there's a special group of people in real estate world known as CEOs of associations. And if that sounds boring enough that you're ready to hit pause on the podcast, just hang on for a second because... Association life does sound pretty boring, but when you are the leader of a group of realtors who are a bunch of independent contracting entrepreneurs who change their communities, you really get to see life with a different lens. And today I'm bringing you one of my CEOs, Angela Burgess from the Gaston Association of Realtors here in North Carolina. Angela, thank you for joining us on the podcast. Hi, Lee. Thank you for having me. So, You are the leader of a small association, and if you are a non-realtor listening to this, we have associations that are ginormously bigger than states, like the ones in Miami, and then you have small groups where the members are almost functioning like an extended family, which is where Angela's fortunate enough to work in Gaston, North Carolina. So talk to us a little bit. Tell our listeners how you came into this role and a little bit of your background before we chat about the conversation you and I had a few weeks ago. I have over 25 years of experience as a certified executive administrator, and I decided to leave the corporate world and venture into this crazy world of real estate not a realtor, just loving it, and moved to Gaston County. I'm originally from Gaston County, moved back after living in Charlotte for about um, 19 years. So I've got to give you extra credit for being a non-realtor who says it correctly. So extra credit, Angela, extra credit for not adding an extra syllable in there. Thank you. Okay, so you and I were at a meeting a few weeks ago, which is an annual event where we educate and celebrate our incoming volunteer leaders and help build bridges with the existing association framework to help them be successful on behalf of all the members. And while we were at supper, we jumped into an interesting conversation. So tell our listeners a little bit about what you said that made my hair on my arm stand up with happy goosebumps. Uh, We were in Chicago, and you had just come back from your off-the-grid vacation trip, and we were just talking about our children and different things that we all, I think, as they get older, have issues with trying to figure out, you know, what to do for the holidays or vacations and have fun and pique their interest. And so while we were talking about that, one of the things when I came back to Gaston County was purging my attic. And as I was purging my attic, I came across a lot of fun stuff that I had been saving for my kids for that rainy day or when they came to be adults and would appreciate them. So as I was doing that, one of the things that for Christmas we had decided to do several years ago, stop doing gifts altogether, which it makes it easier for both. You know, you don't, you're not buying your adult kids something that, oh, hey, a t-shirt. Oh yeah, right. Love it, mom. And so as I came across these things in the attic and these boxes, I was like, oh wow, this would be great Christmas gifts to give. And so I actually, for each one, came across different things and gave them to them for Christmas. It was the best thing to do for that year. They sat on the floor in the living room playing with Star Wars. And Star Wars that year was the rage of everything. It was the new Star Wars that came out. And it was just sitting there with those memories of when they were little kids getting those things for the first time. And it was just, it, you know, brings tears to my eyes just, you know, talking about it. But just being able to hold on to that memory with them from years past. See, y'all are listening to this and you're sitting there going, holy smokes, what a great idea too, because 
the power of this, it's so interwoven in what the world needs right now. Because when you and I were little, Angela, you know, Christmas was your basically your one time a year you got something new. You might get something on your birthday, but for me, birthdays were about hand-me-downs because there were... <laughs> There are too many kids around on the farm, but Christmas you got something new. And now our kids get new stuff all the time. And as adults, if we want something, we just go get it. So we Absolutely. have to find a way to reconnect to something that catches your imagination. Exactly right. And those things for our grown adults, children, I mean, when they're working and they're living their own lives I mean you're right they go out and just buy whatever they need when they need it and for me just being able to you know find something my son and his wife they live three hours away so you know I'm not with them every day my youngest son is still at home and you know I see what he likes but and that's a little bit easier but it is just trying to find that item and connect with that adult child in a way that creates that memory during the holidays. And you know, it's maybe why as realtors, we run into this world of getting so embedded into somebody's life where you're spending all this time helping them find a house or helping them prep a house for the market and you get to know them. And and then realtors have this hang up at the very end of the process where they'd like to buy presents for their clients because you just love them so much. And then what do you get them? Because you go back to what the world offers and what people already have. They don't need anything, but what they need is that connection. So no different than dealing with your family, you're wanting to cement those connections and make them better, which is the same thing that good realtors do with their clients. And also why you probably find so much love working in your current staff role, because you're working with people who I think for the most part, not 100%, but for the most part, they just want everybody around them to be happy. That's true. And I know for me, just going through those memories and those things, it's that moment in time. And even with helping as a realtor, helping your clients as they're purging their own homes, you know, maybe those are things that they can even think about, you know, I'm going to throw this away, I'm going to clean this out. But there are memories in the making in those things that they do find. Oh, girl, there's the title of our episode, Memories in the Making. I love that. And what a brilliant idea that I hadn't crossed over that path yet. And here you are throwing it out there when you're counseling buyers and sellers of homes before they throw it away, ask them if they want to re-gift it to the original person who gave it to them. That is so true, because I know just doing that for myself, I mean, in that moment, it was bittersweet because we knew that that was going to be our last Christmas in that house. So giving those and making that memory that one last time for Christmas was even more precious than just the memory of looking at the back, you know, the, in the past, it was that very moment of realizing, hey, this is our last Christmas here. And so whatever you can do as a realtor to your clients, just help them to be able to make those memories in that moment. So now you're not a grandma yet, right? Actually, I just found out <laughs> Did you really? that, I'm, that I'm going to be, um, they kept it a secret for three months and I was lucky enough to go up to Raleigh this weekend and help buy cribs and pack and plays and all kinds of goodies for my daughter-in-law and son. So, oh, yes. congratulations. And I'm how so smart excited. are they to wait till they got past the, the iffy time to be cautious? Exactly right. But then again, I was thinking, oh no, it's like, a little bit early, but then the holidays are coming through for buying items and things. But I'm excited to even see what this Christmas is going to bring because I still have items and things from the purge from last year that I'm going to be able to give again this year. Because that's where I was going with that is how do you turn this into a family tradition? Do you do you think more carefully about what the new items are that you buy so that it has the potential to be something later? Are you being more, I guess, more intentional about gift giving and relationships since you started this process? I do. And one of the things with 
this position that I'm in, I'm fortunate that I get to travel a lot and go to different conventions and to different areas. And every year it's somewhere different. So when I go to those places, I do look for items in those areas because we do stockings. So with the stocking stuffers, you know, little trinkets anywhere that could potentially be an item to go in that stocking. I do intentionally look for those things and things that for the character of each child that I have. So, yes, I do intentionally do that. So look, y'all, you tuned into this episode probably expecting some more wild and crazy things. But instead, hopefully you've had your mind move in a different direction to think about the intentionality of what you give to somebody else and the intentionality of the long-term nature of the relationship, whether it's with your family, which it should be, or if it's with your clients who honestly do think of their realtors in such a meaningful way if you've done the job correctly. And Angela, by the way, thank you for helping me showcase to the rest of our world that there's a lot of good power to be found in conversations with your peers in real estate that don't have anything to do with actual transactions or inspections or financing, but more to do with seeing the humanity in each other and finding out exactly how awesome somebody else is out there. And I'm very grateful to have you in my life and to have you as my CEO too. Well, thank you. And as you as a member, we're always happy with our members and doing things and serving you. So we really appreciate you as well. All right, guys, now you've heard a different angle on real estate. So if you've got your own story to tell or an angle you want to share, hit me at at Lee Brown on Twitter or any of the social networks to be featured in a future episode. And the next time you're at a realtor gathering, go speak to your association executive, your CEO, and thank them for all they do and see if they're just as awesome as Angela. Angela, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Lee. All right, guys, subscribe for more and we'll see you next time. If you are listening to this episode and you need to tell us something about your crazy life in or around real estate, then tweet me at Lee Brown or reach me on any of the social networks. That's if you're a broker, realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular normal human being who happens to have dealt in real estate. Subscribe for more episodes. And as always, we are thrilled that you joined us for some crazy shit in real estate. See you next time.